Aloha, welcome to the Gaming Headquarters. Mike CB here, welcome to the channel. In today's episode, I'm gonna be talking about the Centipede Arcade Machine here, and also give you a walkthrough on this beautiful machine, and tell you about the parts I had replaced, and also a funny story about this machine too. I had walked by it and the machine was on. Is it haunted? I'll share that story with you later. All right, let's get into this. Let's talk how I got this machine. Well, my friend Dan, I remember at his daughter's birthday party, had this in his basement, along with asteroids. And I always was like enamored that he had arcades in his basement. Although they didn't work, I know that's what he told me, but I know later on when he was going to convert that room where the arcade machines were at into a, a gym and I happily accepted them because he didn't know what to do with them. I was flabbergasted and what was kind of cool he uh, ended up helping me bring it back to my house and I got to hook it up. I'll show you some pictures of it but yeah that was my introduction to having arcade machines in the home. Although I had something else in the home that I'm going to show you guys later in a different episode, but I don't want to talk too much about it right now. But yeah, that was my two arcade machines that I had here. Yeah, hard to believe I also had an Asteroids, but I will touch up on that on, like I said, another episode. So happy I got this machine, and I'm gonna actually uh, talk about the parts I had replaced for it, as well as that um, the haunted story <laughs> I wanted to talk to you guys about. Really glad I got this from him. It looked really well taken care of. I know he had bought it both machines off of uh, Offer Up, I believe, and it was in California, so. Whoever had it took really good care of it. And of course, you know, I will take good care of it as well. All right, I'm gonna show you the parts that I got for my Centipede arcade cab. So before even going and looking at it, you wanna make sure the power is off. And also uh, there's like, um, I had to open, I think they're hangers, that's what, clasp this together but you unhook those I'll show you here in a minute it's already unhatched so let's go move this open it's open already or the latch sorry about that so it's kind of a tight fit so yeah it's held up by here and here in order to open it so looking at the machine, so just be very careful. As you can see, I replaced the trackball with a new part, and I'll show you the website later. The buttons, these are not micro switches. This is an actual leaf switch. So technically when these old arcade machines they will have this leaf switch set up the only thing I had to replace was uh, this part right here and the button works I prefer having this compared to having a micro switch for centipede it's it's a lot better feeling I mean usually when you're playing centipede they, you just hold down the button anyway but I, I prefer this more I want to try to see if I can get this leaf spring switch for my Donkey Kong cab as well. Yeah, sorry about that. It's 
Street Fighter. We can move it to somewhere else. All right, so also here, um, these aren't the lava style buttons anymore. It's been replaced by micro switches. And also I had to get a, order a different harness as well. So basically it no longer runs on the original board. I still have the original board inside the arcade, but it's running on an arcade SD which is in there somewhere. I'll just pull up a B footage on what it looks like and where you can get the part. Uh, I'm gonna remove this so you can see the LCD screen. So, remove the glass. Just pull it up there. And just, just be really careful. I really don't wanna break the glass. I'm just gonna set it aside right here. This is the original. Ooh. Since I have it open, I might as well clean this too. All right, looking at this, it is an LCD screen, but the beauty of this um, LCD monitor is that it uses um, where it's mounted. You know, if you were to put like a CRT monitor, it's the same mount. So all you would have to do is, you know, unscrew it, take it out, and you can put a CRT back in here if you wanted to. I'm probably not gonna put a CRT back in here because this is fine for me. But you know, if it were ever sold and someone wanted to do it, then they could. But I'm not selling this. It was given to me by a friend and I plan on keeping it. If I did want to get rid of it, I would give it to another friend instead of try to make money off of it. So, yep, that's the cool part about it. You can still mount a CRT if you wanted to on here. All right, I'm gonna talk about now, there was an incident that the machine came on by itself. And I'm gonna be showing you the power supply here in a moment. All right, let's talk about why, uh, well, basically the haunting bit on the arcade machine. Uh, technically, Centipede's not haunted, but I just remember walking past this machine one day and it was on. So the first thing that popped in my head is like maybe my son had played Centipede and he just forgot to turn it off, but that's not like him. Cause usually if I'm playing in the arcade room, he'll be playing the machines as well. And I did ask him and of course he said, no, he didn't turn it on. So basically, you know, I'm like, well, how did it turn on by itself? And of course, you know, the first thing you're going to look at is the part. And it's the power supply. Can you see this right here? The Suzu Hap. So I had to unplug it because this no longer works anymore. So I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to plug it in. It's on the off position, which should be like that O or zero. And then it... <laughs> It turned on by itself, you see that? Then uh, look on top and it should be coming on. Yep. And in here, look at the power supply. I'm gonna switch it. Nada. I mean, that should be the on and then I wanna turn it off. No more, it does not work. So I'm gonna have to replace the part. I have it saved on my computer anyway, so that's not gonna be a problem. Uh, one of the things I want to show you too, the Arcade SD board. It has more games in this, but I kept the trackball games that I like. And I didn't want it too long because you can't select the games using the trackball. Uh, technically, there would be a joystick, but yeah, that would really ruin the look for this. So, no joystick. It scrolls automatically, so whatever game you want, you would just hit player one and it would pick it. All right, let's talk about the games that I have loaded up on the Arcade SD board. 
So basically, as you can see, I got Millipede, Crystal Castles, which is a favorite of my son. Uh, I liked it back in the day when I was a kid. Not so much anymore. It's it's okay to me. I prefer playing Centipede. And of course, uh, Millipede, that's a lot harder, but still no, I like playing Centipede only on this cabinet. But yeah, those are three games. And also, it does keep track of your high score. And um, it pretty much fills everything up. Unlike the um, the other board that I have on the Donkey Kong cabinet, that does not. It only saves the first three. And that's it. And it also doesn't keep track of your initials. This one will save the initials as well. So that's actually pretty cool. Alright, let's go into some gameplay on this. Let's do this. Come on. Let's talk about what the game Centipede's all about. Centipede is you shooting your gun through a forest of mushrooms to break and kill the vicious centipede tracking its way towards you. You need to avoid other obstacles such as bouncing bugs and sporadic spiders to make it to the next, more challenging round. Centipede is one of the most popular Atari video arcade games for sale because of its classic gameplay involving the trackball and the pastel light colors of the game. Thanks to the female game programmer Bailey. Programmer Log was also involved in the arcade machine and he and Bailey intended it to attract women players which it did at the arcades. Centipede is considered a masterpiece in my book and I wish I would have given it a chance when I was younger instead of walking away from it. Alright, this is just a bonus commentary. I want to share a story with you guys and gals involving trying to finish shooting Centipede. What had happened on Sunday, I was done filming, but unfortunately when I ran it through the video editor, I didn't realize I could hear the, uh, the dryer that was coming during my intro, so I had to actually scrap that video and then start over on Monday and do the intro and then also try to redo the gameplay because uh, when you see the gameplay which I beat my high score which was that 31 259 and that was Sunday I got the high score yeah this video right here uh, you can't really see the image really well I don't know because of the glass which I should have removed maybe that would have helped but yeah, it's just like, oh, I can't use this. And that's the game that I did the best on. But I had to wait late at night, like uh, 11 p.m. Because during the day, uh, my mother and father-in-law, who have a room next to the Centipede Arcade cabinet, would step in front of me when I'm trying to play the game. So yeah, you know, sometimes things don't work out the way you plan, but I'm glad I was able to um, give you guys some footage of the Centipede Arcade cabinet. Really, really happy getting done at 3 o'clock a.m. today. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to my new subscribers. And if you like this video, please consider giving this video a like. And comment if you have any questions about my Centipede Arcade cabinet. Be sure to also check out my Double Dragon Arcade cabinet right here. Mahalo and take care. Mike CB signing out.